Welcome all you whiskey wonders. This is Mark from Whiskey Whistle bringing you whiskey review number 46. With us today is Longro. And if you're not familiar, Longro is from the Springbank Distillery. Uh, it's a Campbelltown single malt uh, from the Campbellton region, uh, which is um, uh, to, the, to the west of mainland uh, Scotland. And uh, on the way to uh, the, I guess the island uh, island region, so it's fairly fairly close to the coast. And um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, Longro is so named for a distillery of the same name that no longer exists, and it is Springbank's peated uh, single malt. So uh, if you like peat, you're in for a surprise with this one. Now, this is not just any Longro. This is a very special version. Uh, it is one of their wood expressions. And um, uh, this one, uh, now again, pardon my pronunciation if I don't get that right. Uh, this one has been aged, in, uh, uh, finished for a year and a half in uh, Kaja Parolo uh, casks, uh, or Kaya, Kaya Parolo casks. Uh, I'm not sure if it's Kaza or Kaya. Anyway, uh, this is an Italian uh, wine a winery, an Italian uh, vintner uh, by the name of Kaza, and the style of wine is Barolo. Uh, Barolo is really known for its uh, heavy oaky tannins. Uh, so let's find out if that carries through into uh, this Longro um, wood expression Kaya Barolo. Now, this is a seven-year-old single malt scotch whiskey. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. Now, it's a fairly unassuming label here, and it, it's, it's, I don't think it really does a, a good job on camera there to see what that says. So I'm going to read it to you, as I always do. Uh, anyway, so Longro, seven-year-old single malt scotch whiskey. And then it goes and uh, tells you about the cask type. Five and a half years in refill bourbon. Uh, and and then one and a half years in fresh uh, Kaya Barolo oak. Okay, and it was distilled in October 2000, bottled in January 2008, uh, with an outturn of 12,120 bottles, 70 centiliters or 700 milliliters, and a strength of 55.8% ABV. Um, <clears throat> Okay, product of Scotland, selected by, uh, I believe that says, Stuart Robertson, Distillery Manager. J&A Mitchell & Co. Limited, Springbank Distillery, Campbellton, Scotland. So there you have it. Okay. Um, okay, what expression single malt? I'll just read the back here quickly. Springbank is unique among Scotland's distilleries. Every part of the process from malting to bottling is carried out at the distillery. The whiskies in the wood expressions range are free of artificial coloring and are not chill filtered. This will cause a slight natural haze to form uh, when the whiskey is cold, but this will disappear when the temperature returns to normal. The haze will also appear if we reduce the ABV by adding water. Okay. All right. So we're going to get right into the pouring of that one. Okay. Got my trusty Glen Cairn at the ready. And uh, the original cork uh, really disintegrated actually the first time I opened it. Uh, so I'm using, uh, uh, well, another cork that is uh, of a similar style with a slight bit of peat. And um, uh, and it actually fits the bottle, which happened to be a uh, talisker. Okay. All right, so we're going to pour a good sized dram of Longro seven year old Kaya Barolo. There we are. That's about 30 milliliters. And um, the first thing you're going to notice is the lovely color that we've got. Uh, going on there. Um, that is a fairly bright uh, kind of a blood orange color, isn't it? Look at that. 
And um, again, as it's non-chill filtered, uh, you're going to be able to see uh, not only some very nice slow legs with 55.8% ABV. Uh, so the legs will be very, very, very slow. Look how slow they are. If you can see that, they're going very, very slowly down the glass. And we're going to have a bead line uh, left at the top there. Um, uh, just because of the viscosity uh, from not being chill filtered and having all of those you know, fatty acids and other heavier compounds um, that remain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so seven years old is quite young, but isn't that nice that it has an age statement? That's very reassuring. Um, for a lot of uh, a lot of the companies, um, a lot of the, the single malt distilleries now, and the companies that manage them. They seem to be a little bit afraid of putting an age statement on uh, some of their whiskeys. And, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, debate going on right now uh, as to what to do about transparency. Um, I would definitely support uh, full disclosure. Uh, you know, however, uh, there have been a lot of uh, non-age statement whiskeys that I have really enjoyed that I know for certain uh, of of the quality or I know for certain you know that I'm getting I'm getting something that I'm I'm paying for um, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll be very honest about what those are and if you'd like to know you can ask me and I will mention uh, which which of those uh, NAS do I really trust um, and do I stand behind uh, as a product? Um, long story short, the one thing I do not support is when a brand just totally begins to uh, remove uh, their age-stated whiskeys in favor of non-age-stated whiskeys uh, and, um, and charge the same price when you know for a fact that there would be a lot of younger whiskeys involved there. Anyway, okay, so since it's so young, we can get right into the nosing of this one. And before that, there will be a short advertisement right here. Okay, welcome back. Let's get right into the nosing, shall we? And I mentioned that Longru is a peated whiskey, and you definitely get a lot of peat. It's not a really big, big, huge peatiness uh, like you get in some of the... Um, uh, the famous Isla uh, single malt whiskeys. Some that start with L and some that, some that start with an A. But it's got a lot of uh, uh, phenolic uh, essence, phenolic content. I wonder what that would be, but I'm going to put it on par with a particular distillery that is on the Isle of Skye. Uh, uh, so roughly about that level of peating. Now this is a much earthier peat. Um, not quite as oily or as um, industrial uh, that you may find with the Isla distilleries. And I'm getting a, a kind of a bonfire essence and uh, smoked sausages. Interesting. And there's a sweet a sweetness to that in the background as well. Hmm. Uh, I also wrote here uh, wood fire, which, well, a bonfire, you would get wood fire, wouldn't you? Hmm. Okay. Well, let's taste this peaty monster, shall we? Hmm. It's 
very reassuring. But as I'm tasting this right now and I'm looking at my notes, I'm thinking, yes, that's exactly what I feel. Um, you get a, a big, big sweetness at the front. Uh, and then it moves into uh, some light sourness in a good way. And then you get into the bitter, dry, tannic uh, sort of flavors uh, that come through. Uh, so that's as far as the, the basic tastes. As far as individual notes, what am I getting? Uh, there's some very ripe green grapes going on there. Uh, I wrote here white chocolate. Um, so, you know, again, a powerful sweetness with a bit of nuttiness and a bit of vanilla uh, mixed in. Um, raisins as well. Anyway, quite, quite interesting. Let's try... Uh, one more, shall we? Cheers, everybody. Mm. It's got a nice oiliness to it. And boy, I'm drinking this. It's 55.8%. And I can handle it. Um, it is not overpower, overpoweringly, uh, um, what can I say, alcoholic. Um, <clears throat> mm. And finish-wise, medium peat um, has a sweet trail. So the trail, it trails off in a, in a, in a sweet, sort of a, a soft... Uh, ending that keeps goes quite quite a while considering it's seven years old uh, orange peel Some jammy fruit and I wrote here pretty long for seven years old And I'm still tasting it now and it's not just the peat that I'm tasting but the orange peels um, and uh, This fruitiness and this sweetness seem to carry <clears throat> I don't know why but um, Today for some reason uh, the single malt whiskey is giving me um, giving me a little bit of gas. Anyway, I apologize. Uh, and yes, there's a mirror right there. And yes, I did just check to see if my collar was straight. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to add a bit of water to that now. And uh, we've still got, yeah, give or take. Again, I think that's roughly, you know, between 25 and 30 milliliters. I'm going to add two good-sized teaspoons. One, two, and we will let that sit there and mix up a little bit. Now, this is not the first uh, from the distillery that I have reviewed. I've also reviewed the Springbank 10-year-old, uh, the standard 10-year-old, 46% ABV. And uh, I will put a link to that. Uh, well, should I put one there now? I'll put one at the end of the video, okay? So at the end of this video, there will be a link uh, to link you to the Springbank 10-year-old, which, again, is another very interesting, very engaging, very challenging, although very rewarding single malt that I think a lot of people who are already interested in single malts and already have tried many of the, uh, you know, the top 10 brands... Uh, they will enjoy it because it's different okay so you can look for that link at the end of uh, this video all right and uh, I'm showing some pictures there um, so that's the view of uh, of the area around the distillery and and then we get into uh, the distillery itself I meant to cut that a little bit to fit the frames with a little small sorry about that so you can see the casks taking in the air. Uh, here are the malting floors. Uh, and again, as I read there, Springbank does everything, uh, including malting their own barley. And here is the still room. They're medium, uh, medium length, medium height, uh, medium sized stills. And uh, uh, the long row label. I don't know why that didn't fit the frame, unfortunately. 
Okay. Okay, so let's try that uh, now with water. And uh, before so, we're going to have a short advertisement right here. Okay, thanks, thanks for coming back. So let's see how that does with water, shall we? It's a lot sweeter than before. And um, compared to what I had written in my notes before, although I think I've added more water now than I did before, um, there's a real sweet uh, herbal note coming through, a spicy note coming through. And um, it's clove, so a bit of clove, a bit of cinnamon, something like a Chinese five spice. It's very warming. And it's a lot sweeter than before and a little bit less peaty. And I, I, it seems like I always find that with uh, peated whiskeys that after you've added a little bit of water, you lose a little bit of that peaty edge. And there's still that uh, smoked sausage note there as well. Hmm. I think I really like this no the, 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 the smell of this better with water. And there's a touch of vanilla coming through as well. Have I missed anything? No, I really wrote nothing uh, of interest there. Okay. All right. Cheers again. Let's try that with water. Still quite a lot of peat in the palate and the taste. The sweetness is bigger. However, it, it seems as though uh, that tannin, the tannin, uh, the tannins and uh, the dryness are also quite powerful too. So it's very, very uh, puckeringly tasty. Um, what have I written here? I've written here grape must. Grape must is, um, uh, you know, when you're making wine, you extract the uh, the juice, and you're left with pulp and skins, and uh, well, that's called uh, grape must. Let's try that one more time. Hmm. You can taste the wine influence there. Again, the green grapes and, and raisins carry through, as well as some, some maltiness, of course. Um, and the finish, again, nothing has really changed that much. My mouth feels a little bit drier now. Still quite sweet. A little bit fruity. Um, and you're not gonna you're not gonna get a lot of peat in the finish, a touch, but not very much. Uh, so if you're looking for a really really a really big peat bomb, uh, this will probably not do it for you. Uh, however, I think this is a really really good meeting uh, between um, a, a wine cask finished, like port. Or sherry or or a wine uh, and and a peated uh, whiskey somewhere meeting in the middle there um, and I think uh, uh, 
people who are not really really huge on peat uh, will find this enjoyable because honestly um, the peat has really faded you know so throw a bit of water in there and you'll find this to be not that much more than uh, than a, like a Johnny Walker or a Highland Park as far as uh, the peat content um, when you've added some water at uh, bottle strength, yes, it is peaty. I get a fairly mild peatiness in the taste and um, not a whole lot in the finish. So I think that's a really good uh, bridge between uh, the the peaty Isla whiskeys uh, and the milder Highland uh, whiskeys and and the the Campbellton uh, Springbank which has a touch of peat in the, in and of itself. Okay. All right. Uh, so overall, what have I written here? Um, an intriguing single malt with a very sweet peaty malty flavor. Uh, lots of richness. Lots of fruit and grapiness, um, and uh, and a fairly substantial finish, as I mentioned. All right, so uh, for the whiskey whistle whiskey score, Long Grove Wood Expressions Kaya Parolo is going to get eighty six out of a hundred. That's eighty six points out of a hundred for uh, Long Grove from single uh, from single malt. Longro from Springbank Distillery, the Kaya Borolo, uh, seven-year-old, uh, distilled in 2000 and bottled in 2008. There's a couple of ex a couple of similar bottlings anyway. So this one is getting 86 points out of 100. Okay. Um, I found this here in uh, in Seoul uh, at the Namdaemun Market. And if you are in Seoul and you're looking for a place to find uh, uh, fine whiskeys, uh, I think I've mentioned the malt shop many times. And I've also mentioned uh, the Namde Moon Market. There's a few other places that uh, single malt seller are available. So please feel free to, to contact me in, uh, in a comment or in a message or through Twitter or Facebook. Uh, uh, Twitter at Whiskey Whistle. The um, Asperand, I believe that it's it's called, as uh, uh, BG has informed me, um, and Whiskey Whistle on Facebook, uh, Instagram as well. So uh, your pick, you can find me, and you can find out where you can find some uh, delectable single malt Scotch whiskeys here in Seoul. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's it for me. I'm Mark, you're watching Whiskey Whistle. Please subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen and please tune in next time, okay? Take care.